welcome to the first installment of Hawaii Writers Showcase. Our first featured author, Wendy Wilson, brings us to Mililii on the south side of the Big Island. Hi, my name is Wendy Wilson. I'm a recent transplant to Hawaii via New York, Virginia, North Carolina, Hawaii. I retired from my library position to move here in 2017. The story I'm about to read is called The Other One. It's being October, I wanted to do a little realm, trip into the realm of horror. The Other One by Wendy Wilson. The knocking began at 3.13 in the morning. My hand fumbled for the alarm clock next to the bed. The cheap plastic slipped from my careless hands and dropped to the floor, adding its own knock to the sound coming from the downstairs. From the other side of my, the bed, my wife groaned and turned over. Who's banging at this hour? I don't know, Mel. I'll go check. I grabbed my Louisville slugger and tiptoed to the bedroom door. The porcelain doorknob rattled when I twisted it. Shh, I hissed. At least the brass hinges didn't creak. I stepped into the hall and could hear the rapping louder. Melinda called from our room. What's happening, Dave? Who's knocking? I turned back and glared at her. Shh, quiet. You'll wake the kids. Too late. DJ had his door open, his own question evident in the brown-eyed stare he gave me. Go back to bed, son. Probably just a branch hitting the shingles or something. My, his gaze fell to the baseball bat I clenched. I, I saw, DJ paused. What did you see? I saw a shadow at the door right before the knocking. I had to go pee. He shuffled from foot to foot. I still gotta go pee. All right, go pee, but be quiet. DJ ran to the bathroom and slammed the door shut. No help for it now. His sister would pop up at any moment. Daddy, a small voice, voice piped from the third bedroom. Daddy, what's that noise? I'm scared, it's getting louder. Melinda swooped and enveloped the tiny form of Zoe, our four-year-old daughter. I heard murmured whispers of, it's okay, Daddy will find out as she ushered our youngest back into her bed. I t tightened my grip on the bat, and with my other hand clasping the railing, I slid my foot to the first step and the next, and grimaced at the resounding screech. Damn those old steps. The tapping of the door paused, as if whatever lingered on the other side listened to my approach. Behind me, the toilet flushed, and DJ whispered, keep your feet on the outside of the steps. So I did. His trick worked. I made it down to the bottom with no more squeaks, creaks, or tweaks. The knocking started again about halfway down. The night held a quarter moon, and the porch light turned off for the night, making things hard to, to catch what prowled beyond the frosted sidelights of the door. I glanced back up the stairs to see Melinda and DJ clutching each other at the top. Zoe's head leaned out from her door, and right before I turned away, a shadow shimmered behind her. I blinked, and when I looked again, the shadow was gone. Melinda frowned and waved me to the door, mouthing the words, Well, go on. The knocking stopped. I knew it wasn't going to start up again. Don't ask me how, I just did. My hand gripped the doorknob and twisted it. The door swung open, and I rushed outside, swinging my trusty Louisville slugger. Nothing. Off in the distance, there came the beat of bird wings. Beneath my feet, outlined on the gray welcome mat, lay a single black feather twisting in the October night. I picked it up and, with a last listen, went back inside and shut the door. My shrug released Melinda and DJ from their tense clench and they stumbled down the stairs. What is it, Dad? Did you find out who made the racket, Dave? Melinda tried to open the door. I held her back. Nothing. Just this black feather. I held the feather out to show her as a yell came from upstairs. Mommy! Daddy! Melinda and I rushed back up the stairs and into Zoe's doorway and snapped on the light. We were both breathing hard from the scare and the run. Zoe sat up in her bed, pointing at the closet. It's in there, Daddy! What's in there, baby? I gasped out of breath as Melinda hurried to her side. Zoe dug her face into Melinda's armpit and kept pointing at the closet. Melinda shot her eyes at the closet in a go-look signal and, rocking and s murmuring soft words, 
I still had the bat. It's in there, Daddy, I saw it. Zoe's voice broke into cries as her mother rocked her, crooning to her. My hand was sweating, so I rubbed my palms across my t-shirt and choked up on the grip. My family was scared. It was up to me to keep them safe. Again, my hand reached to a doorknob and twisted. The door rebounded against the wall and started to close. I rushed in, swinging the bat back and forth into the semi-darkness. A fuzzy black thing screeched its way past my bare legs. We all screamed, and I leapt into the air and watched as a black creature paused at the door, its back hunched. The creature hissed before running away into the dark hallway. Before it took off, I recognized it. My mouth went dry, and I took a few coughs to clear my throat. <clears> throat> a cat, a damn cat, I said to the three rigid faces, my own heart rate re- racing. Remember the realtor told us about the former owner's cat? The one they couldn't find? That must have been it. Wasn't the missing cat a gray tabby? Melinda asked. Yes, no, I don't remember. I was too shaken to remember what a realtor had said about a cat. Let's all go down to the kitchen and I'll make some hot cocoa, Melinda offered. It'll help us sleep and remember you have a busy day tomorrow unpacking. Keep your eyes open for that cat, too. Soon we were in the kitchen, surrounded with half empty shipping boxes and dishes and appliances sitting pell-mell on the counter, sipping hot cocoa with marshmallows. DJ chatted on about where the cat was, and Zoe sat gathered in my arms, already half asleep. Well, that was one hell of a welcome to our new home, wasn't it, I joked. We all freaked out over a little cat. Zoe stirred in my arms. The cat's name is Percy. Hmm? What did you say, baby? How do you know? He told me. I wasn't scared of Percy, Zoe mumbled half asleep. It was the other thing. I'm not sure if anyone slept the rest of that night, but I sure didn't. Zoe's words kept rattling around in my head. What was the other thing she was talking about? The night sky was fading to gray when I finally got up and made a pot of coffee. Melinda wandered in and we sat sipping our mugs on the deck watching the sunrise. This was the house of our dreams, large Victorian with a wraparound porch overlooking the rolling mountains of the Shenandoah Valley. A pileated woodpecker hammered out a pattern on an oak tree not too far away. What do you think that noise was last night, Dave? Sure sounded a lot like that woodpecker, Melinda blew across her steaming mug. I don't know, but you want to know something? It isn't the knocking that scares me. It's what Zoe said that got shivers running up my spine. You mean the other thing? Don't you go getting all spooky on me, Dave. Little kids imagine all sorts of stuff, especially the first night in a new house. We should know. She got those night terrors. Probably just that. I nodded. Shouldn't read too much into it. Four-year-olds were famous for their wild imagination. All the same, I'm going to find that damn cat. Mel laughed, and we went back into the house to finish unpacking. I went looking for the cat, not to be found, so I went for a second cup of coffee. Zoe was in the kitchen, sitting on the floor under the table, with her stuffed animals and dolls having a tea party. I crawled in under the table to join them. Zoe giggled. Daddy, you're too big. Now I have to move Leo. She shifted her oversized stuffed lion and smiled. Now there's room. Want some tea, Daddy? Of course, sweetheart. I accepted a pink plastic princess cup filled with water and, with my little finger sticking out, sipped the offered refreshment. Can we talk about last night? Zoe began humming. She fussed with Leo and her dolls, pouring more tea into their cups. Zoe, we need to talk about what scared you last night. Percy scared the bad thing away. I can't find the cat, Zoe. I think he's gone. Zoe kept humming. Bedtime came around, and Melinda and I tucked Zoe in the, and kissed her good night. We checked on DJ and then turned in ourselves while the dark night settled around the house. Mommy! Daddy! Zoe's cry echoed down the hall. I checked the clock. 3.13. Beneath Zoe's cries, the knocking on the door started. What the hell was going on? While Mel ran to Zoe, I rushed down the stairs, not bothering to be quiet this time, and flung open the door. Again, nothing there, except another black feather. Melinda called for me to come upstairs. As I reached the top of the stairs, a fleeting black shadow skidded out of per- Joey- Zoe's room. Percy! That frickin' cat was trying to terrify my daughter. Red rage erupted behind my eyes, and I swung my bat down at him, but Percy had the moves. He slipped down the stairs and disappeared. Dave, come in here. 
Melinda's voice brought me back to myself. DJ stood in Zoe's doorway, his eyes wide with fright. I pushed past and ran to engulf Zoe in a hug. Both Melinda and I rocked her until her sobs quieted and she could speak. Daddy, the scary thing made me try to take me again. So Percy stopped it. I looked over Zoe's head at Mel. Maybe Percy is the thing scaring you, honey. No, Daddy, Percy scares the thing away. Melinda hugged Zoe and kissed her forehead. Whatever it is, it's gone now. Time to sleep. We tucked both kids back in bed and went to our room. If this keeps up, we're going to have to bring her to a doctor, Mel said. Not yet. I'm convinced it's that damn cat. I'll find Percy and get rid of him. Still got a few days before I go back to work. I'll make it a priority. The next day I spent hunting. I set some food out in a humane trap and waited. Percy was too smart. When I checked the trap after a few hours, the food was gone, but the trap wasn't sprung. That night it happened again, and the next, and the next, always at 3.13. Knocking at the door, Zoe yelling, us running, Percy slipping away. By now I was getting pissed off. I couldn't figure out how the cat knew the time, but I was going to get that cat once and for all. The fifth night, I decided to keep watch on the hall outside Zoe's room. Percy wasn't going to scare my baby anymore. We did the usual bedtime routine. Zoe, Zoe took a bath, and I got, it, got her into PJs. I read her a calming story, got her a cup of water. I could tell she was scared when she wouldn't let my hand go. Will the scary thing come back? I leaned over and kissed her forehead. If it does, Daddy's right outside your room. She slid up onto her side and closed her eyes, arms clasped about her stuffed animals. I settled into the hall floor and cradled my own security object, my Louisville slugger, a cup of strong coffee next to me, and my laptop. Settled in for a long night, I streamed episodes of Doctor Who and waited. Shortly after three, a black shadow slithered up the stairs. It stopped at the top and stared at me with bright green eyes. My joints complained as I stood up and stared back at it. Percy, where in blue blazes had he come from? I swung the bat and cursed as the wood slammed into the floor. Percy melted back down the stairs. The knocking began, right on schedule. But this time, another sound was added to the banging. <coughs> Wings battled against walls and a loud, caw, 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 overpowered the knocking. Suddenly, Zoe yelled, no, no, screamed. I stood rooted, rooted my feet refusing to move. Daddy, help! My body froze in place. Every muscle in my body fought against my desire to run to my baby to save my littlest. I could move, but I felt like I battled a force imprisoning me. I couldn't breathe. The power, that's the best word I can use to describe the thing stopping me, held me pinioned and helpless. Melinda and DJ tore out of their rooms. Mel raced into Zoe's room. For the rest of my life, I will never forget the scream that tore from my wife's throat. The raw terror released me from the forces holding me, and I staggered into the room in time to make out Melinda grabbing onto Zoe's feet as she was pulled towards the closet. The three of us were never able to fully agree on what it was that drew my little girl into the darkness. Mel swore she saw a shapeless form. DJ said he saw a demon. We all agreed it was black as a coal pit. What did I see? I saw a huge black raven. Cunning, beady red eyes looked at me and winked. It wrenched Zoe out of Melinda's hand and dragged her screaming and kicking into the depths of the closet. Everything went silent except for a familiar sound. Tap, tap, tap. That's the end of it. Thank you for watching Hawaii Writers Showcase. This has been a production of Hawaii Writers Guild and Tranquil Storytime. Check us both out on YouTube.